What are Windows Hyper-V checkpoints? How to use them the correct way? And can checkpoints replace regular backups? I will answer all these questions in this video. First, let's start by explaining what checkpoints are. Checkpoints are point-in-time backup of your virtual machine. They are helpful before making a change to the operating system that could be potentially destructive. Let's say you want to install a new application on the server or delete an old one. But if something goes wrong, you want a solution to roll back to a working version of your VM. You can perform a regular backup of the VM using the built-in Windows Backup Tool or any third-party solution. The downside of this method is that it takes time to perform the backup and the restore. On top of that, your VM is offline during the restore process. Here is when checkpoints come in handy. Checkpoints will save the state of your VM in a point in time. And when you want to go back to that state, you will recover your VM in the same state. There are mainly two types of checkpoints. Production checkpoints and standard checkpoints. The standard checkpoint will take a snapshot of the virtual machine's state and its memory state. That means that if there is any application running at the time of the snapshot, its state will be saved. Unlike the standard checkpoints, production checkpoints only take a snapshot of the disk. The production checkpoint only protects data, it doesn't care about running applications. The other difference between the two checkpoints is that when restoring the VM from a production checkpoint, this one will shut down the VM after rolling back, and you must start the VM manually. So in a production environment, this downtime may be a disagreement. At this point, you may think that the standard checkpoint is the best choice for take VM snapshots in a production environment. It saves the VM and the VM memory state and you will not experience a downtime when rolling back. The flip side of the standard checkpoint is that it is not suitable for any virtual machine especially those VMs that replicate with other VMs, such as domain controller or database VMs. And here is why. Imagine that at the time you took the standard checkpoint of your database VM, the database application was in the middle of a transaction. What happens when you roll back the database VM? As soon as the rollback is completed, the database application will continue the interrupted transaction, which could lead to a database inconsistency with the replication partner. Standard checkpoints are not suitable for VMs that are part of a node and replicate with other VMs. Now that you know more about checkpoints, let me show you how to use them. Here I'm on the Hyper-V Manager. First, let's select one of these two VMs. I select the running VM. The first step is to check the checkpoint settings. So when I click on the VM settings, I select checkpoints and under checkpoint type, you can notice that the production checkpoints is selected by default. So whenever you take VM checkpoint, it will automatically choose production checkpoints. You can also select standard checkpoints. Let's start with this type of checkpoints. I click apply. Okay. To create a VM checkpoint, you can right click on the VM and from the context menu, you select checkpoint. You can also use the option from this menu. So I click and the checkpoint creation starts. All right, the checkpoint has been successfully created and under the checkpoints section here, you can see the checkpoint right here. 
The checkpoint has been created with an automatically generated name containing the VM name SRV03, the date and the time. Of course, you can change this name by right clicking on the checkpoint and rename it. So let's rename it standard checkpoint. Okay. And under the checkpoint, you have the state of the running VM. So the next time I will create a new checkpoint, he will be added under the first checkpoint. But before creating the checkpoint, let's do uh, some changes on the VM. So I will delete this checkpoint by right clicking on the checkpoint name and select delete checkpoint. Okay. Let's open the VM. I will do simple changes by opening the notepad application and I will type some text. For example, this is a standard checkpoint. Let's save the file. Let's name it text, save. And I will add an extra text, but I will not save this text to show you how standard checkpoints work. Now let's take a checkpoint. The checkpoint is being created. Okay, checkpoint created successfully. Let's rename it. Perfect. So now back to our VM and let's close Notepad without saving the typed extra text. Don't save. Okay. Now let's roll back from the created checkpoint. So I right click and click apply to roll back. Hyper-V asks me if I want to create a checkpoint before rolling back. This could be useful if, for example, you want to roll back after 10 days from creating the checkpoint and you are not sure if the rollback version will be good. So you want to create a checkpoint in case the old version is not working properly. In our case, I'm on a lab and I don't want to create another checkpoint before rolling back. So I click apply to roll back. You can notice here the state changed to saved. The VM is now starting, restoring. Okay, now the VM is running. And here you notice that I find the notepad opened after rolling back and the text I typed with the extra text I didn't save before closing the notepad. So as we said earlier, using the standard checkpoint will save the data and the memory state. So whenever there is an application that was running when you took your checkpoint, it will be saved. So you will not use your data in this application. Okay, now let's do a test with the production checkpoint. So for that, oops, let's type another text. This is a production checkpoint. Let's save the text. Okay, text saved. And let's type an extra text. Okay, and I will not save this extra text. Now let's uh, take production checkpoint, but before I need to change the settings. So I click on the VM, settings, checkpoints, and select production checkpoints. Click apply. Okay, let's take the checkpoint. The standard checkpoint is being created now. 
OK, production checkpoint created. Click OK. Let's rename it to distinguish it from the standard checkpoint. Rename production checkpoint. Now I go back to my VM and I will close Notepad without saving the extra text. Don't save. Okay. Now let's roll back from the production checkpoint. Apply. The rollback is in progress. Notice that after the rollback, the VM has been shut down and I need to start it manually. So let's do that. And as you can guess, I have lost the not saved extra text. Another interesting use of checkpoints is that you can use them as a kind of backup and you can export the checkpoints to an external drive or on share or to any backup media and restore them back if there is any problem with the original VM or you can use them to clone the original VM and use that clone for testing purposes on a lab environment for example. To export the checkpoint, select the checkpoint you want to export. In this example, I will select the production checkpoint. You can right click and select export. Select the export location. I will select the external disk drive. OK, and click export button to start the export. OK, I got an error telling me that the export directory already exists. OK, I will choose another directory. Redo the operation again. OK, export. And this time it worked. The checkpoint is being exported. All right, the checkpoint export has successfully completed. Now let's pretend I want to clone this VM for testing purposes. To do that, I'm going to choose import virtual machine and follow the wizard. On the locate folder, I will browse and select the folder to which I have exported my checkpoint. It was on the external drive, export folder, Click on the folder with the VM name, SRV3. There are two folders. One folder that contains the disk drive and the second folder that contain the virtual machine configuration. I will select that folder, virtual machines. You can see that it's empty, but in reality, there are some files in there but they are not visible. As you can see, there are three configuration files. So let's continue the wizard. Next. OK, here I need to select the virtual machine to import. And the virtual machine has been exported with the name of the checkpoint, production checkpoint. So I select that, click Next. And here I must choose the type of the import. The first two options will restore the VM using the existing unique ID. Choose one of these two options if you want to restore the VM after the VM, for example, has been completely deleted. Because if the VM exists, because if the VM still exists and you restore it with the same unique ID, this will create a conflict with the original VM. In my case, I want to clone the VM, so I will select the third option, copy the virtual machine and create a new unique ID. So there will not be any conflict between the two VMs. Click Next. 
I will keep the destination folders by default. Click next. Here I must choose the disk location. I will change the disk location because I don't have enough space on the C drive. Let's choose this folder on the external drive. Click next and click finish to start importing the VM. After the import process complete, your virtual machine will be added to the virtual machine list. The virtual machine has been added with the production checkpoint name, so I will change that. Rename it to SRV03 test. And now I have a clone of the SRV03 machine I can use for testing purposes. So a quick wrap up. Hyper-V checkpoints are a powerful tool for quickly rolling back changes during testing or maintenance, but they are not a replacement for regular backups. Use standard checkpoints for quick rollbacks in non-critical environments and production checkpoints for safer application consistent snapshots in production. And remember, avoid using standard checkpoints on critical VMs like domain controllers, database servers, and email servers to prevent data corruption or replication issues. If you find this video helpful, don't forget to like, subscribe, and check out the other videos on Windows Server. Thanks for watching.